increase the depth of that cut to about 98 This is the actual sacrificial back that we cut here. How are you? Today I'm going to show you a temporary fence on my capex. Now I'm not the first person to do this. This has been done many, many times. I'm using a little bit of 90 by 45 dressed pine and I'm holding it in place with the clamp that came with the capex and I have set my depth adjustment at the back here on the capex so that the blade is only just going in to the table by about a millimeter. Now why am I doing all this? The reason being I'm going to have a super clean cut on the back of the piece of timber that I cut. This is called a zero clearance. So this is the actual sacrificial back that we cut into. The other thing that the advantage of this is is that now because I'm, I've lifted the saw up a little bit, so it's only going into the table by about a millimeter as I said, I've increased the depth capacity of the cut of this 10 inch blade. Ordinarily it's an 88 millimeter saw. By doing it this way and advancing the fence forward, I've now increased the depth of that cut to about 98 millimeters. Now this is very handy if you're doing posts that haven't been dressed or if you just need that little bit extra in the depth of your cut. This is not to be confused with Capex's 120 situation, which this saw is a 120. Remember the 88 and the 120 are exactly the same size diameter saw, they're both 10 inch blades. The 120 works on curving and baseboards and uh, skirting boards around behind the arbor. So the 88 millimeter depth of cut is restricted by the flange on the saw. The other thing I had to do to save any nastiness is to take this little dust guard off. Now this is an extension to the dust collection point and Festival have designed it so you can remove it for when you're doing the 120 work. Very handy idea. If you leave it on you run the risk of it flicking up and getting caught on the blade and cutting it. I don't think it's going to do any damage to you but that's the way it goes. And bringing it across a slightly thicker piece of timber it may not clear it. It will clear 88 but it doesn't like to clear anything much more than that. So you can take that off but remember the dust extraction is not going to be as good. Alright, all that chat. Let's have a look at how it actually works. I'll slide this along. Now if you wanted to you could get another one of these clamps and put it on the other side if you wanted to be super safe. The reason we've got the block going through all the way there is so that small pieces of timber don't flick past and get caught in the blade while it's coasting to a stop. Okay, I'll grab my helmet. Okay, so here we go. Unfortunately, I don't have a piece of 98 with me at the moment, but I'll take a photo of the back of the body here and show you the distance from the flange down to the top of this piece of timber as I just cut it then. The timber comes off, absolutely beautiful. Have a look at that. Love this, I love this saw. Uh, main body of the cut, beautiful. The sacrificial fence is staying there perfectly. Be aware that if you lower the blade any further down into the table, you will cut all the way through this sacrificial fence and this will be loose. As I say, the safe way to do it is to use another clamp or use double sided tape to lock it all on. Personally I think that using a sacrificial fence is going to give you a much neater cut than what you're normally given. Now they do this so that you can flip the saw over at 45 degrees and it works great for that. But for a super clean cut, sacrificial fence, it doesn't have to be this tall and if you're cutting narrower stuff you can leave the extra dust collection rubberized port on there as well and that'll be fine. So there you go, make yourself a sacrificial fence, get super clean cuts and every now and then a little bit extra depth if you need it. But remember all this stuff up here. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye.